Okay, um, these are the promised series of lectures. This is the first one of the series of micro lectures that I promised to help the students catch up. And I'm going to try to be as brief as possible to keep these short and sweet and uh, fitting to your attention span. And in the interest of that, let's dive right in. So this lecture is going to be about um, the basic building blocks of programs and uh, basically what's in your, uh, in your toolkit as a programmer the basic flow of programming what are you trying to do when you program you know you have uh, uh, basically what you're doing when you're programming think you think of yourself as like you're in you're in a virtual reality world and uh, uh, you're telling Java to make you all these machines that do work for you and each one of these little machines is going to be an object and each one this object knows how like, let's say that you want to make uh, I don't know a sofa this object knows how to cut wood in a certain way this other object knows how to nail this other object is a nail that holds wood together and so on and so forth so you make all these little machines and then you string them together to do something uh, a, a procedure step by step and that is basically what programming is and the tools that are available at the most basic level to a programmer are primitive types that's your ints and booleans and, and, and doubles and longs and floats your operations that's adding subtracting assigning all of that and objects and objects are just a way to summarize a bunch of operations an object is just a thing that's gonna hold a bunch of data and is gonna remember how to do any set of operations that's more complex than just adding one or sub or adding ten or adding a hundred you know sometimes you wanna ca for example in, in those little payroll programs that we were doing you wanna add up the hours that the employer worked and then the employee worked add any overtime pay subtract the tax rate maybe the employee's married his tax rate is different and yada 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 so the object remembers how to do a bunch of complicated stuff and make a couple of decisions for you Alright, let's go a little bit more in depth now. Primitive types. The primitive types are built into the programming language. Most programming languages have the same ones. The most important ones that, that I really need you to remember right now are int, double, boolean, and also know that there are a bunch of others. All right, But int, double, and boolean are really the most important ones. The, the, those are, are the ones that you can't do without objects objects like I said like I was saying before they're li little abstract machines that we create in programming to either hold data do a job or a bit of both each object we create will be of a given type and this type is what defines how the object behaves and the features it has the names the uh, sizes and types of variables it holds the operations that it that it remembers that it knows how to do like the met those are the methods that it has um, and, and Java has a large amount of predefined objects, JFrame, JOption, pane, random, etc. Those are really classes, not objects, but let, let's keep it simple for now. Um, you can also define your, op your own objects. This is what a class is for. So a class is the definition of an object. Okay? A class is a file that tells Java how an object behaves. So JFrame, for example, you know, JFrame is an object that, that knows how to, when you create a JFrame, you've created an object that knows how to display a little frame on the screen. But how does it know how to do that? Because of the JFrame class. The JFrame class is where everything is defined that a JFrame object knows how to do. So now let's talk, uh, let's go on a little sidetrack and talk a little bit more about classes. Classes are the device by which you define your own object types. They have three main elements. They, I just want you to remember these three main elements that classes have. So when they ask you to write a class, you know you're going to need to write three things. You're going to need to write fields, okay? Those are the variables that the class holds. Like in the test, we had a, a bit class baseball player, and it had a you know, number of times at bat, number of singles, doubles, triples, home runs. Those are all fields. That's data that's held inside the class. Uh, methods. Methods are the operations that, that, like the complex operations that, that your, your class can do, that your objects will be able to do. So methods are defined in the class, and they're simply blocks of code that can be invoked by the name of the method. So if your class uh, a student has a get grade method, and you have an object called Johnny, and, and, and Johnny is of the student type, it's, a, it's an object that was created from the student type, defining the student class then if you do Johnny dot get grade that'll invoke a particular block of code whatever code is inside that method get grade so methods are simply like blocks of code that you 
have set aside within a class that each object that's a member of that class will be able to invoke okay so you it's it's bits of code that each object will be able to invoke to do a job to do a certain job okay and uh, then the final element the final uh, principal element of a class is the constructor the constructor is simply just another method but it has no return type and all it knows how to do is initialize all the fields of the class that's really the main the main job of a constructor initialize all the fields of the class and take I any any arguments that uh that you might want to give it like if you're creating a baseball player for example like from the from the uh, example in the test if you're creating a baseball player you might want to you know uh, the constructor might want to take the at least the name the position and maybe you know number uh, number at bats and 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 all those stats because you know when you're creating a baseball player he's or if if he's not a rookie he's already had a certain number of bats and whatever but so the constructor will take the parameters in and then we'll create an object where it sets those parameters equal to the fields of the object or rather it sets the fields of the object equal to those parameters okay and that's all a constructor will do it'll initialize the object based on the values that you pass it okay uh, strings strings are a special kind of object and they're they're not special because of what they are but because of how we treat it and um, most people imagine it as a series of characters and Java actually tricks us into thinking that that's what they are that they're sort of like a primitive type because when you create a string you can just do um, let's see here you can just do something like string um, blah equals that right and you never invoke the new keyword so how is it an object and you can create it without invoking the new keyword you know if it, if, if, it, if it were a real object then would be looking at something like string, string equals new string and then we pass it the parameter right that's how it should be if it were a proper object but um, you know they made an exception for string for shorthand because strings are so widely used that the less typing that you do for strings the better and uh, in reality a string is an object and what it does is it stores a fixed length sequence of characters and it knows how to manipulate these sequence of characters in a ton of different ways so you know we've gone over all these ways and you do need to know them because they're gonna keep coming back but I'm not gonna go into detail on them right now because this, this lectures are meant to be short so some of the different ways in which uh, the strings know how to work how to manipulate the data the, the the group of characters that's inside of them you can do compare to and you compare it to another string equals equals ignore case substring and the the method substring will just give you back a string uh, that that first instance of the method method substring that I have there w that only takes one parameter the int index um, what it'll do is it'll return the substring from that starting index all the way to the end of the string and then uh, there's also index of um, which looks uh, return gives you back an int and um, it looks for or like let's say a character let's say the character is k so index of k will return the first index of the string which contains a character k so we have you know and then index of j we have that too it'll return the first index of this string which uh, contains the character j so if you do a substring with an index of embedded into it like the example that i have on the screen all that's doing is giving returning the substring of the original string from the first occurrence of the letter k all the way to the first occurrence of the letter j and that is it um, that's also an example of how you can build uh, functions into one another you know these methods uh, si since index of has an integer return value you can stick it anywhere that requires an integer so if you have a, a int x equals you need an integer to the to the right hand side of that equation index of would actually 
work there. And substring takes an integer parameter since index of returns an integer that'll work there. But I'll get more into return types and how that works in, in the next lecture. And then the last thing we're going to cover in this lecture is the operations. So there's, you know, the basic algebraic binary operations. Those are the ones that we all know and love from math class. You know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, for strings, the plus sign has a different meaning. It's concatenation. And like I mentioned before, strings are a fixed length uh, um, a fixed length series of characters. So concatenation of strings is actually not that simple of a matter because you need to create a new string and then of length equal to the length of string 1 plus the length of string 2 that you're concatenating and then read character by character from string 1, put them into the new string and then read character by character from string 2 and put it into the new string. That's how concatenation really works internally and it's very inefficient but we'll get back to that a little bit later in the semester oh, assignment I only put one assignment operator right now um, in there um, the, assign the, the main assignment operator is equal but there are some others and for example you can have in i equals 5 and that's an important statement that I want you to remember forever the, the two main things that you need to remember and you can, you can pretty much um, deduce most of Java syntax from these two statements are in i equals 5 and the other one is public static void main string array arguments and uh, well, we'll get back to that in the next lecture comparison comparison operators greater than less than um, equals greater than or equal to less than or equal to and unary algebraic plus plus and minus minus and like it says there k plus plus is simply shorthand for k equals k plus one and uh, that is it for today's lecture. Um, the next one will get a little bit more in depth and it'll be, will be a little bit more interesting. I just needed to lay some foundation. And uh, in the next one, I'm going to be addressing some uh, sources of very um, frequent confusion I see with uh, Java syntax. But that is it for today. And uh, have a good night and happy holidays.